Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habita fillah A question was asked Ustad, what about taking from those who slander eminent Saudi scholars and make takfir on the rulers of Muslim countries should they be abandoned? Meaning talking about uh, students of knowledge or scholars who make takfir of Saudi scholars and the rulers of Muslim countries First and foremost uh, it's not restricted to Saudi scholars or other than Saudi scholars, but in fact, any scholars of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And so it is not restricted to a time nor place necessarily when we talk about the scholars. And so we also have to get in our minds that there are a variety of scholars here, but predominantly scholars uh you have scholars here of ahl sunnati with jama but you do have some scholars that call to other than that some that have takfiri tendencies some that are uh from the various ahzab various hizbi groups maybe even an inclination towards akhwan muslimin or an affinity towards akhwan muslimin and so you have a variety of different scholars so it's not restricted to a place and that's something that's very important for us to understand that there are scholars of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah in Mauritania. There are scholars of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah uh, in Somalia. Scholars of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah in Indonesia a lot, and in Somalia a lot. And there are scholars of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah in Ethiopia. And there are scholars of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, of course, in Kuwait and around the world. That's a ni'mah min ni'amillah. That's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is from his favor, tabarak wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La tazal ta'ifatu min ummati zahirin ala haq hatta ya'tihum amr allahum ala thalik. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said, There won't cease to be a group from my nation on the truth uh, uh, until the hour is established. So they, they, will, they will continue to be ahl sunnah mawjood. They're present now. They'll be present until the last, uh, to the end of times. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be from amongst them. Amin ya rabbil alameen. So the other aspect of your question, you said, and make takfir on rulers of Muslim countries. So absolutely you should not take from people who uh, make and abuse the, the principles of takfir. Meaning that tikfir is something which is from the religion. This is why, uh, uh, you know, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah has a lot of um, uh, statements about this in his Mijmu'a uh, Fatawa. Uh, and some of our contemporary scholars have spoken about this extensively, like uh, Sheikh Abdulaziz al-Rajih, uh, Imam Fouzan, uh, and Kathir, and Kathir, Kathir min ulama'ina. Many of our scholars have spoken about this concept, that these are sharia rulings, but the difference between Ahlul Sunnah and the people of Takfir, the Khawarij, is the Khawarij and the Takfiri groups that emanate from them, that they are groups that abuse the principles of Takfir. Maybe they don't look to the conditions for Takfir at all. Maybe they negate some of the conditions of Takfir. Maybe they do not pay, take heed, or even are aware that there are mu'ana, there are prohibitors to making takfir on a in specific individual. So these things required ilm. They required ilm of fiqh fi deen. Qala nabiyyana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man yirid Allah wa bi khayran yifakuhu fi deen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, he gives him fiqh, understanding of the deen. So this requires fiqh and from being, and 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 to be from ahl fiqh. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be from amongst him. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said, al khawarij kilab al nar The khawarij are the dogs of the hellfire. So this is why, because... They are one of the few sects that are mentioned in in Quran, Quranic texts, uh, not mentioned in the Quran, but in Hadith literature. They are one of the only one of the few groups, and they are the mentioned the most. You know, there's more several Hadith about the Khawarij. And alluding to the Khawarij, and some very open and clear about the Khawarij, that they're named. So, that lets us know the immense fitna that they would bring to the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and in fact to the earth, even though they claim to make islah, 
They claim to be rectifying, they claim to be callers to the Sharia and supporters of the Sharia as the group Abu Hamza and his crew used to do in the UK. Uh, and, and many other Takfiri groups and ideologues. So they claim to rectify, but in fact, yufsidun fil ard. They cause fitna in uh, around the earth. And as the Messenger وسلم, said, Kilab Nar, they are the dogs of the hellfire. And we know in this life that most people look to the dog as a lowly animal, even if they take them as companions, even if some people love them as pets and, and so on and so forth, but they still throw their scraps off the table to their dogs. They still, many people leave their dogs in the doghouse. Some people sleep with their dogs, but still the point being is that the dogs mostly are considered inferior creatures to human beings. And the Prophet ﷺ made that likeness and mentioned the Khawarij as a sect. And he said, Al Khawarij Kilab Nar. They are the dogs of the hellfire. And the hellfire is what? It's the lowliest place you could be. It's the worst place you could be. So to be on that menhaj, to be on that sabil, to be following the fitna, to be a part of Ahla Khabith. To be from the people of the dogs of the fire. To be from the people of wickedness and sinfulness and, and, and filth. Is obviously Midhmoon. It's obviously something sinful. And a place no believer should want to be associated with. So therefore, those people who call to that path, you do not want to listen to them. Not even for one second, no matter how beautiful their Sirah is. No matter how beautiful their tafsir is, no matter how beautiful this or that, or they're good in history, or they're good in the language, they're good with that, they're good with this. They're excellent in fiqh. These are examples. Don't. Because their danger and their shur, a shedman fawaid, fawaidim. Their evil is much greater than the benefits they can bring you. You may feel good. It may sound really nice. But then it means you're going to be inclined and have love for them in your heart. And with that love, it only grows. That's a natural human inclination. The more you listen to someone and the more you can relate or you benefit especially from them, the more you're going to have as muhabba in their heart. This is why Ahl sunnah was so... You know, our Salaf Asari was so stern and staunch about dealing with Ahl Bid'ah and not listening. Even some of them putting their hands in their ears like Ibn Sirin and others. There's so many narrations. Why? Because they knew listening to Ahl Bid'ah was a sabil, it was a means to destruction. That by listening, it's a means to mahabba. You're going to begin, your heart's going to open to them. And you're going to be invited to what they're upon. And that's why some of them wouldn't even want, didn't even want to listen to a ayah from the Quran from a person of desires. Now, with that being said, Ahl Bid'ah is on different levels. Tafawit. They're not all the same. So the most extreme of them, being the Tekfiris, are people absolutely you should run away from and not listen to at all. Because they are a great danger and harm to humanity and to Ahl Sunnah and deviating people through their menhaj and their methodology away from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, away from Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah. So to make it short, as I've already extended my speech, do not listen to Ahl al Takfir and those people who, who spend time with the Muslim rulers, speaking about the Muslim rulers, because there's no benefit in that. They're not going to change the leaders, even if they, even if they're talking about one that may be a disbeliever, or if they're talking about one who they think is a disbeliever. So that's two different scenarios. So make sure you understand that. Yes, of course, there's people, Bashar al-Assad. Okay, that's clear. You know, there are those who are outside of the fold of Islam over Muslim countries. Okay. However, with that being the case, Ahabat Fillah. Those who spend their time and energy 
busying you with that, not teaching you tahara, not teaching you how to pray, not teaching you how to come closer to Allah, not teaching you ma'amalat, fiqh ibadat, fiqh ma'amalat, not teaching you the basics of your religion, arkanal iman, arkanal islam, which subhanAllah, you'd be surprised how many people don't even know those basics. Or they're familiar just in a general way, but they don't know any details with regards to those things. So those people will busy you with that which has no benefit. And, only, and, and in fact, that's one aspect, no benefit. The second aspect is what harms you. So there is that علم غير النافع, there's knowledge which is no benefit. وعلم that is, uh, you know, that has darar, that has harm, that is harmful to you. So that is a whole nother level, like learning shirk and kufr and ilhad, okay? Or learning the manhaj of the takfiris, especially if you don't have the tools to refute. If you are a person, you're a student of knowledge and you're there, you're learning, going through their books because you are grounded in those topics and you are refuting it or refuting it with the statements of the ulama, that's one thing. But just for any and everyone to go into the books of Ahl Tikfir, no. So that is just a, a little bit of what we can offer about that. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.